Tesla, BMW, Mercedes, Volvo, Ford, Neo, Great Wall Motor, Lee Auto, and many others. What do these global giants have in common? They all depend on the advanced battery technology developed by one company, CATL. From modest beginnings, CATL has risen to become the world's leading EV battery supplier. This is a story of innovation and strategic brilliance that changed an entire industry. In a small Chinese village where the smell of rice paddies filled the air and the sounds of farmers echoed through the hills, Robin Jing's story began. Born into poverty, his childhood was very different from the fancy offices he would later work in. His small hands, rough from farm work, despite his lack of resources, his talent for learning stood out, catching the attention of teachers. A retired professor saw Zheng's potential and became his mentor, encouraging him to aim higher than anyone in his village had ever imagined. As high school ended, he aimed for Shanghai Jiao Tong University, one of China's top schools. His acceptance was a significant moment, celebrated by the whole village. For Zheng, it marked the start of a new challenge, a move from rural life to a world of opportunities. The academic challenges tested Jing. He faced advanced topics in math, physics, and engineering that were much harder than what he learned in his village. The language barrier was another challenge, since many textbooks were in English, which he was still learning. His village background gave him a strong spirit. He approached his studies with determination, often spending long nights in the library and skipping meals. While classmates enjoyed nightlife, he focused on his goals, knowing he couldn't waste his chance. His hard work paid off. As the semesters passed, Jin's grades improved. He not only caught up with his peers, but also began to excel beyond many of them. Professors noticed the quiet, hard-working student from the countryside who asked thoughtful questions and offered creative solutions to difficult problems. In his final year, Jing's thesis on energy storage systems caught the engineering department's attention. His work, although still developing, showed promise and creativity that suggested he would make significant contributions to the field. On graduation day, he stood among the top graduates, and his honors degree reflected his amazing journey. Jing faced a difficult choice. The safe path led to a state-owned company that offered security and respect. Yet, despite these benefits, he felt unfulfilled. The routine work paled in comparison to the intellectual excitement of his university days, leaving him restless and drawn to the cutting-edge technologies. After work, he spent time learning new things. He read about technology and discovered Dongguan, a Chinese city growing fast in the tech world. The city was becoming a major hub for making electronics, drawing many companies and talented workers. Jin got more and more excited about Dongguan's busy tech scene and wanted to join it. The city was full of new ideas and progress, with people building tomorrow's technology. This was very different from what he was doing now. Quitting a stable job at a state-owned company was a tough choice. When he talked about his plans with colleagues and family, they looked at him in disbelief and worry. They reminded him of the security he would lose and the risks of starting fresh in a new city. Their concerns were valid. The electronics industry, while growing, was also very competitive and unstable. After just three months at his state job, Jin made a brave choice that would change his life. He resigned, packed his bags, and with only his savings and dreams, set off for Dongguan. This leap into the unknown soon paid off when he landed a job as an engineer at Shinka Electromagnetic Factory, a part of the Japanese company TDK. Shinka was the world's largest independent supplier of hard disk magnetic heads, a key part of the fast-growing computer industry. For Zheng, this was his entry into the center of the electronics revolution. At age 30, he reached a remarkable milestone when he became Zheng Ke's first mainland technical director. This rapid advancement demonstrated both his exceptional technical abilities and his skill in managing the intricacies of a multinational corporation. His tenure at Zheng Ke proved invaluable as he engaged in various projects that enhanced his expertise in electronics manufacturing and battery technology. After departing from Jing Ke, Robin Jing recognized an opportunity in the emerging lithium battery industry. 
1999, he and two partners established Amperex Technology Limited, ATL, in Hong Kong. The company aimed to capitalize on the expanding battery market, which was driven by the growing popularity of consumer electronics, particularly mobile phones. However, Jing's shift from technical director to startup founder was about to take a scary turn. The team's inexperience in battery manufacturing led to a choice that almost put their new company at risk. ATL bought a polymer lithium battery patent from Bell Labs for $1 million. It seemed like a smart decision, promising technology that could help ATL compete with established companies. Jing and his partners were excited, thinking they had found the key to their success. Sadly, their joy was short-lived. While working with the new technology, they discovered a major problem. The batteries had a critical flaw, swelling and potentially exploding with repeated use, which threatened ATL's future and turned their $1 million investment into a potential disaster. Time was running out and investors were getting worried. So Jing knew he had to move quickly. He brought his team together to work on fixing the problems with their batteries. He and his engineers worked long hours for many weeks. They tried different materials, changed their formulas, and did many tests. Every time they failed, they got closer to losing everything, but he kept going. Their work was very important because in the late 1990s and early 2000s, more and more people needed lithium batteries for their phones and other portable devices. If they succeeded in fixing the battery problems, they would earn a lot of money, but failing would ruin them. Finally, after weeks, they made a breakthrough. ATL developed a new electrolyte formula that solved the swelling issue. The relief in the lab was clear as tests showed their batteries were now safe and stable. They had saved themselves from disaster and were ready to enter the market. The turnaround was remarkable. By 2001, just two years after their close call, ATL achieved an incredible milestone. They shipped one million battery cells. ATL's achievement in making a reliable battery caught the attention of big names in tech industry, including Apple. Gaining orders from notable clients not only confirmed ATL's technology, but also set the stage for their future growth and success. In 2003, Apple began searching for a battery supplier for its new iPod. Little did they know this search would lead them to ATL, a little-known Chinese company destined to make a significant impact. Despite having superior technology, ATL had struggled to gain recognition in the competitive battery market. When Apple's engineers discovered ATL's batteries, they immediately recognized their exceptional potential. The iPod was set to change how people listen to music, but it had one main challenge, battery life. Apple needed a battery that could keep the device running for hours without adding extra weight. This was a big challenge, and many established battery makers struggled to provide it. When Apple reached out to Jing, he saw the chance and took the lead in meeting Apple's strict requirements, knowing that his company's future relied on it. Every prototype, test, and small change could make or break them. The negotiations were tough, with ATL competing against big companies with years of experience. Their hard work paid off. In 2003, ATL landed the contract to supply batteries for the iPod with an order of 18 million units, a number that seemed impossible for them just a few years prior. This contract not only brought in money, but also showed that Apple believed in them. The impact of this partnership was huge. For Apple, it meant they could fix the battery life issues that had affected earlier iPods. Suddenly, ATL was more than just another battery maker. They were the company trusted by Apple for their main product. The contract opened doors that Jing and his team had only dreamed of, catching the eye of other major brands. Soon companies like Vivo and Huawei wanted to get high quality batteries from ATL. This new status allowed ATL to actively seek more contracts and grow its presence in the market. The timing was perfect, as the smartphone boom was just beginning. ATL was well placed to take advantage of the rise in mobile devices supplying batteries to a growing number of manufacturers. By the late 2000s, ATL had become a leader in batteries for consumer electronics. Its partnership with Apple opened up opportunities to work with other tech companies, and business was booming. However, he realized that the consumer electronics market, though profitable, had its limits. Growth was slowed by the small size of handheld devices and only slight improvements in battery technology. As Jing sought new opportunities, 
he became very interested in an emerging industry with great potential, electric vehicles. The global car industry was about to undergo a big change, and he believed that batteries would play a key role in this transformation. China was preparing to take the lead, creating policies to support new energy vehicles. For Jing, this marked a significant shift in the automotive industry. The potential for growth in automotive batteries was huge. While a smartphone battery might only need a few watt hours, an electric vehicle could need hundreds or even thousands more. But Jing faced a major challenge. ATL, the company he built from scratch, was now owned by Japan's TDK Corporation. This foreign ownership made it harder for him to enter China's important automotive market. Jing found himself at a turning point, struggling between the success he had with ATL and the huge opportunity he saw in automotive batteries. In 2011, he made the brave choice to leave ATL and start a new company focused solely on automotive batteries. This new company, Contemporary Amperex Technology Co. Limited, CATL, quickly became important in the market, building on ATL's reputation as an Apple supplier. CATL landed an order from BMW soon after starting, giving it instant credibility in the automotive world. The timing of CATL's entry into the market was perfect. In 2015, the Chinese government established the whitelist policy, which required car manufacturers to buy batteries from approved suppliers. CATL was among the first companies on this list, giving it a strong advantage in China. Jing's strategic choices continued to pay off. CATL took a smart risk by investing in ternary lithium batteries, which, despite being more expensive, provided higher energy density. Important for electric vehicles where range matters. This attention to high-performance batteries helped set CATL apart from competitors and allowed the company to meet the needs of high-end automakers. Even with tough competition from established Japanese and Korean battery makers, CATL's strategy helped it quickly grow its market share. In 2016, the company made 14.88 billion yuan and had a net profit of 3.02 billion yuan. By 2017, CATL sold 12 gigawatts of power batteries, capturing 32.6% of the global market and 52.1% of China's market, solidifying its position as the global leader. CATL's Kirin battery, launched in early 2023, can be charged in just 10 minutes and has a range of up to 1,000 kilometers. Poised to transform the EV market, this fast development can change how people see electric vehicles and their limits. They also have even bigger plans. The company is developing CTC technology, which integrates battery cells into the vehicle structure. This innovation results in lighter, more efficient electric vehicles with extended ranges. However, this technology is still being developed and won't be available until around 2025. To achieve these goals, CATL is quickly expanding around the world. The company aims for a production capacity of 500 gigawatts per hour by 2025, opening factories in China and Turingia, Germany. Their lighthouse factory shows this commitment. Recognized by the World Economic Forum, this facility produces one battery cell every 1.7 seconds with a defect rate of just one in a billion. This high level of quality and speed sets new standards for the industry. He knows that to lead in this field, complete control over the supply chain is essential. To secure its future and mitigate risks from supply chain disruptions, CATL has invested in key mining projects, including two major lithium initiatives. They also approach partnerships wisely. The company has teamed up with major car makers including joint ventures with leaders like SAIC, FAW, GAC, Dongfeng, and Jili. Robin Jing aimed to revolutionize transportation by expanding into mobility services and partnering with ride-hailing companies to broaden CATL's influence. In January 2022, CATL introduced EvoGo, a battery-swapping service that provided leasing options for most electric vehicle models. This smart decision helped ease range anxiety, a big worry for many potential EV buyers, making CATL an important part of the EV market. Zheng's vision went further. He saw that the future of transportation includes self-driving cars, so CATL invested in new technology, leading a key financing round for Inceptio Technology, which is developing self-driving solutions. In an unexpected move, 
CATL also entered the semiconductor market by working with Hubei Xiaomi Yangtze River Industry Fund to invest in a semiconductor technology company. CATL also expanded into financial services by investing in Zhengdao Zhuxing, a mobility service under SAIC. Experts believe these varied ventures are a smart way to reduce risks related to CATL's main battery business. Only time will tell if Jing's big vision for CATL will come true, changing not just the battery industry, but also the whole world of transportation and energy. My philosophy, I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the rich guy in the richest guy or whatever, it doesn't mean it. So I want to uh, share that he's uh, rich or wealthy to many people to try to create a good society, especially for the sustainability. This is the number one refined from my, my view of my uh, 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 wealthy.